the people that actually control the money, the Paulsons, the Geithners, the Bernankes, the Yellens, the Greenspans, the Carneys, the Rothschild family, the JP Morgans, the Lombards, these are always the people, when you look at them, that though they are the point zero 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 one percent of the, the population, are the most incredibly wealthy individuals. Yeah, the other 99.999%, almost reoccurring, that actually do the physical work and produce the wealth actually have nothing. To me, by now, humankind should have twigged that the fact it's not an accident. If you need to be wealthy, you need to control the money supply. In principle, what we have created is a public as opposed to a private bank. The basic difference, obviously, that a private bank is owned by moneyed private commercial interests, invariably controlled by a banking cartel, which has the interests of those shareholders at its highest level, as opposed to a public bank, which would have the interests of its members or those within as a faction that have deemed to want to create it. It also stands under common law, as opposed to mercantile, merchant or admiralty law. And also it gives something called what's called finality of settlement on the spot of time. The principle of finality of settlement is that what you do within any banking system that is fair and, should we say, egalitarian, is that the method of exchange between the man that's trying to sell you the bag of salt and you who are looking to pay it is a transaction input between two people without any third-party intervention whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And historically, this has always been the nature and function of money unless you went to borrow it when the third party came in. So typically for many years, if you wanted to buy that bag of salt, a price would be quoted, one shekel or one talon, and you would agree and the deal would be struck and that's it. It's finished. There's no interest. There's no taxation on it. There is no third party responsibility involved at all. And what we've gotten away from is those very basic concepts up and until, until about 1931 in the UK, when we were actually taken off the gold system. And in 1933, and just until President Roosevelt took America off the gold standard by what was called the Gold Confiscation Act, which is possibly the biggest theft ever perpetrated on, uh, on a nation ever. There's a better way